Fuck you, mom and dad. If I ever did an intro, that should be the intro. Fuck you, mom and dad. No. Um, actually gonna work that into this video. Uh, we'll see how good I am if I can work into the video. But based on this question, I should be able to pretty easily. The question was, this person's having a trouble, having some trouble with their dog. Uh, they're taking it to a trainer. Uh, most of the time has been on a prong collar, but now the dog's had some issues and the trainer decided to say, you know, I think it's best for the dog to go to an e-collar. Might get a little better results. Okay. Owner went to uh, get an e-collar. It's been working on it. Um, however, because this person and their dog live with their parents, the parents who've never owned a dog before, because that was part of the question, that if the parents have never owned the dog, are now against the e-collar. Especially the mom and the mom is having nightmares for the dog because of the stigma that the e-collar kind of currently has in society. And the owner of the dog is wanting what's to do. Should get rid of the e-collar, go back to just the prong collar or anything else. Good girl, good boy. Told you I was working with my dogs and, you know, putting them on a long line, you know. So they're getting better. Anyway, so they, I lost, anyways, coming back. So, person's wondering what to do. Our friends are wondering what to do. Should I get rid of the e-collar to appease my mom and dad? Because even though they've never owned a dog, they, their knee-jerk reaction is that they're against it. Okay. I first got to applaud you for going to find another solution that one wasn't working for your dog initially. Okay, you were working with a trainer and you're working with the prong collar, doing your obedience. If it's not working, you went to go find another solution. So I, I applaud you for that. I'm gonna come back to your parents here in a second. So what you should do with that stigma that your parents so much have for the e-collar, bring them with you. If you're doing it at a class or if you're doing it at a facility or whatever, if the trainer does home visits, let mom and dad speak with the trainer. Let the expert talk to them about how they're working with the e-collar and what kind of progressions they are doing so they can, you know, have some peace of mind and that the dog isn't, you know, being hurt. Okay. Cause as, and it's no fault of your own, but if you don't have an expert doing it, you're going to do the best you can to kind of educate them on plots. Good girl. Let the expert educate them on the usage of the e-collar and how you're doing it, okay? Because again, no fault of your own, but at a certain point, it's not gonna be, you're not gonna do it justice, okay? And it's, because it's new to you, you're only gonna be able to teach it to the, your ability and that's what you just comprehended and remember from what the instructor says. So put it on the trainer to explain to your parents, hey, this is what we're doing because what we're doing first, we weren't getting the results that we wanted, so we're changing things up a little bit. Parents that, hey, this is what we're doing and why we are doing it. And let them feel the e-collar, okay? Let them feel the weight of it. Let them understand this is the shock of it. So, fucking gate is open. I wonder why the fuck that is. All right, anyway, so I'm all over this place on this one. Ava, plots. Put it on the instructor to educate your parents. If he doesn't do a house call, put him on the phone, doesn't do that, just bring him to the class or wherever you're doing your training, okay? Let them know that every session you do with that e-collar starts from zero because depending on the weather, depending on the surface that you are on. Um, just any external variable that could change. You always start from zero with the e-collar because that can just change how much sensation the dog is getting from it, okay? You're, you can literally have your mom hold the e-collar as you crank it up so she can actually feel what it is like, okay? They gotta understand you're 
responsible for this dog. You love your dog. You cherish your dog. They never had a dog. So one, how can they really say anything if they've never had that experience before themselves? So again, they're just going based off of the knee jerk reaction, what they've probably heard horror stories from. Because most people, just like anything, just like any kind of review, people who love a service or anything good, you can hear a little bit, but people will always scream from a motherfucking rooftop that, you know, they how much hate they have or how much dislike they have something. You're always going to hear more dislike than love, okay? That's just how it works, okay? So rather than, you know, her hearing all this stuff and going off on just what she's heard, let her have the experience for herself. So you, again, just have her hold the e-collar and you crank it up slowly to the point of what you want your dog to feel. And some days you don't need to go that high. Some days you need to go a little bit higher based on their drive, based on, you know, like I said, temperature, moisture, the ground they're on. All these little external factors play a role in that you're slowly, you're doing the least amount of work, the least amount of sensation on that e-collar to get the result you want. And that is it, okay? You're not just cranking it up and doing harsh corrections or anything like that and basically abusing the dog. You're not doing that, okay? You can literally baby step it in, you know, you're just feeling that little annoying twitch that they're not doing something right. Then when they're finally doing it, you let it go. You know, sometimes if you're doing a correction, you don't even press it. Again, you're fading it out. You're testing the dog. You know, sometimes you're doing, you're clicking it. Sometimes you're not. Okay. So it's not just there to zap the motherfucking life out of the dog. So that's what I would do. That would be my invitation to you is let them have that experience and let the instructor educate them rather than you're trying to do justice by second hand from what the instructor told you. You know, it's like that game of telephone. Rather than you telling them trying to, rather than you telling them what the instructor told you, let the instructor tell them. And if they're a responsible trainer, they should have no problem articulating what they're doing and what's the theory and the whys behind what you're doing, okay? Bring this full circle. I think the reason they're having this reaction is because they are putting you in a category. They're putting you in a category of, you probably always did what, you know, you've been told, and I know you said that because it was in the question, you always did what you were told, you never actually branched out to find information for yourself, okay? So, this is all new to them. You are growing as a person, so rather than doing what you typically would do, you went out and you found your some, some personal growth to the point where you know you're experimenting with the new ideas, you're being open-minded. By their time, by their age, they're pretty much set in their ways and they've never had that experience before. So rather than saying, you know what, fuck you mom and dad, I told you I bring this full circle, and literally just writing them off saying, this is my dog, this is it, I don't wanna hear shit about it, you could. But rather than doing that, it's very coming from a place of resentment. Do it from a place of empathy to help them understand your logic, your feeling, because you care so much about your dog, you want the best for your dog, and you're gonna go to any lengths in order to give this dog its best life. If you come from a place of nurturing, you'll be just fine. And I think they'll understand much better. Okay, I've talked too much about this one, so good luck, done.